Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. We know better, you get better. That is what we do here every single day. It is Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. Our quote of the day, thinking the way you've always thought and doing things you've always done will only lead to more of the same. You need to be disruptive. That is from our guest today. Dr. Mark Hyman, who wrote the book, The Pagan Diet. Um, I am coming to you from our West Coast studio, all by my lonesome, Kelsey and Kev are uh, in the East Coast studio, as you can see, Kevin's just a little slumber here, mm -hmm. just mm, because it's wintry and cold there and it's sunny and amazing here. Sorry, honey, don't be jelly. Uh, so I am in the West Coast studio. My eye is tearing uncontrollably. I don't know why I'm very frustrated. I think I'm getting some allergy stuff here. Um, the only uh, negative, I think, to being here. Our guest today is a 13-time New York Times bestselling author, and he's going to help us reclaim our health the right way. Um, I'm so excited. I read this book uh, on the plane coming back to Los Angeles, and it is amazing. It's so enlightening. I think he had a way where he really broke through to me, and I think he's going to break through to you guys. Um, I know, Kevin, you felt like it, you were getting breakthroughs as well. Yes. Because um, he's like us. He's been, I mean, like if you, when you, you hear his story, it's not someone coming from such a high and mighty place. Right. This is somebody who ate very poorly, did not take care of himself, right. was very stressed. I mean, just stuff like regular people eat and then yeah. he, he just he kind of hit had this perfect storm of bad health and he fixed it so just a little bit of um house cleaning for you guys so um as you know we've been doing this show for a long time and um we really need help monetizing it to keep the lights on to keep going so um bear with us we are going to be adding in some ads but i do want to assure you that they're ads that have um been put through the meter we really like to work with partners who we believe in who we like who we would use who we do use and so um when you start to hear these throughout the podcast just know it's what's helping us to keep the lights on and the doors open and um if for some reason it's too much for you. You do have the option to head over at Patreon for as low as $5 a month. You can get ad free shows, but a good reminder, if you invest in yourself for $10 a month, you can also get the extra episode a week and the healing workshops, which are game changing. You have exclusive access to people like Dr. Mark Hyman, whoa, where you can ask him <laughs> questions and you can have an intimate experience with our super heal squad. Um, we have an incredible group of, um, of Patreon members and it's becoming a family. So, uh, join us over there. It's really, really amazing. And we're doing something really special there. So bear with us. And we're so grateful for all of you. Um, our Hill squad is so important to us and, um, we're grateful you guys are on this journey with us. So today our journey is going to take us down a physically healthier place, but also the physical, right? The mind, the mind gut, you know, connection is so important um, because this is affects anxiety, it affects depression, it affects so many things. And so I think um, I think it's gonna be uh, completely holistic in terms of how much it will help you today. Before we get to that, it's time for our Dunkin' break. And I'm coming to you with my little Dunkin' mug. Today we're talking about um, the benefits of green tea. So um a refreshing ice cream tea of course we have our bagel minis kelsey i think is enjoying those right kelsey kelsey's not enjoying them only because she can't but, eat a bagel uh, don't but, worry kevin wiped wait, them out kevin wiped them, them out said, i'm I enjoying them. Had them i had them kevin Maria, wiped past them out. tense kevin, <laughs> i couldn't you're wait. Supposed to wait i'm sorry they're awesome they they're just so they, guys, good when they come out of the oven oh it's and criminal like little pillows yes. in your mouth oh it's like, it's like you take the bite and you get the little squeeze of cream cheese. Mm, so good. Anyway, um, tea is not only gentle on your stomach, it's packed with great antioxidants. And I'll tell you whether your tea is hot or iced, obviously it's a lovely lighter option that still gives you some pep in your day. But if you recall, 
um, Dr. Christy Funk, top breast cancer surgeon uh, in the country has been on the show many times. And she has spoken about the benefits of green tea extensively with us. And I'll tell you that she talks about three cups of green tea a day um, cuts your chances of getting breast cancer in half three cups of green tea a day. Um, And it lowers your chance of recurrence by up to 57%. If you have not listened to that episode with Dr. Christy Funk, Kelsey, you guys will give them the episode number and the summary of this Mm -hmm. um, show. We'll link it. So that they can easily find it. Um, Dr. Funk talks about the benefits of soy milk and how the isoflavins bind to the receptors and, and are also really good for cancer where you know normally everyone says soy is bad and i was the one who was telling people to get off of soy too but the one thing that stuck out from the dr oz episode we had recently that i really love and even in this um in this book dr mark hyman and dr gundry i think talk about it too is that medicine's changing constantly right we're continuously researching so a lot of us get so frustrated with like, oh, broccoli's good one day and bad the next. So then screw it, I'm just gonna eat Kit Kat bars. But I think if we now adapt to the concept of medicine's constantly changing, we won't be as frustrated. We're just gonna be like, oh, okay, cool. So now they've done more research and they've learned more. So just know um, you know, that and green tea is amazing. So if you're looking for a lighter option, green tea at Duncan is delicious. Um, I actually decided sometimes, you know, Kev, when I really need help, I add a second coffee in my day. Just Mm. sometimes I'm going to switch over to my green tea. I have not been religious about having green tea in the amounts that I need to. So I'm going to don't forget the stuffed bagel minis. America runs on Dunkin'. So does better together. We love donkeys and um, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, bitches. Okay. Well, listen. Let's get to our chat with Dr. Mark Hyman. Dr. Mark Hyman believes that we all have the potential to create a life of vitality for ourselves, dedicated to tackling the root causes of chronic disease in order to transform healthcare. Dr. Hyman works tirelessly to teach the world how to heal their bodies and their minds. A 13 time number one New York Times bestselling author, his work is world renowned. He believes food is the number one tool for vibrant health. My 76 year old dad, who's a type one diabetic of 50 plus years with no ill effects of the disease is proof of that. One of the leading voices and pioneers for functional medicine, Dr. Hyman's beliefs and work could very well help to transform healthcare as we know it and create a 21st century model for medicine. Better Together and the Heal Squad welcome you, Dr. Mark Hyman. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for being with us all the way from Maui. I'm so jelly. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty nice. I can't, I can't deny it. (laughs) So the pagan diet, I know kind of started off. Pagan Pagan? diet. Yes. Oh yeah. Pagan would sound really bad actually. Oh, it's not, it's kind of a joke (laughs) between paleo and vegan, you know, because of all the diet wars and conflicts. And the fact is that, you know, they have far more in common with each other than the traditional American diet. And, and uh, we need to focus on the things we agree on as opposed to what we don't agree on. And, and actually, that'll solve most of our problems. Yeah. Well, I think um, first, let's explain what the pegan diet is to everyone. Um, it seems pretty simple. And I'll tell you, I was reading the book on my flight back to Los Angeles the other day, mm-hmm. and it just it pierced right through like it connected with me in such a way that i don't feel like i've had before and i'm really excited for our audience to have the same kind of experience and so um, explain to everyone what this is and what makes it different i guess than the others well you know most of us are pretty confused about what to eat one week we're hearing we should be paleo the next week vegan's going to save your health and the planet maybe you should be doing keto or low fat or low carb or high carb or raw or who knows what? And everybody is just so confused. And off the diet wars are worse than off in the political wars. You know, you've got red and blue. But I mean, by the time you look into the nutritional conflicts, it just it's overwhelming for people. And they give up and they go, I'm just going to eat whatever. And the truth is that the science is pretty clear about what to eat and what not to eat. And around the margins, there's some questions. But when you, for, for example, when you look at paleo and vegan, they're actually identical. <laughs> except for one thing, which is where to get your protein, animals or 
I bet gra grains and beans. And, you know, <laughs> it was basically sitting on a panel with a couple of friends of mine. One was a paleo doc, one was a vegan cardiologist. They were fighting like cats and dogs. And I was like, hey, if you're a paleo and you're vegan, I must be pegan. Everybody laughed. I thought, oh, that's a good joke. <laughs> and, then I, and then I went home on the plane. I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. They're identical. Like, they both believe we should be eating whole foods. They both agree that we should be eating lots of fruits and vegetables. I call it plant forward or plant rich diet. They both agree with nuts and seeds are great and that we should be eating lots of good fats, avocados, olive oil, and others. And that we should not be eating processed food, that we should not be eating a lot of starch and sugar, that we shouldn't be eating all kinds of additives, the five pounds of additives that the average American eats every single year, or the GMO foods, or the hormones, or the antibiotics, or the pesticides. I mean, nobody, nobody in their right mind would say, well, we should be eating more pesticides with our vegetables, mm -hmm. right? So there's a general agreement, even they both agree that dairy is not the best food for humans. The only difference is where to get protein. And so I began to think, well, you know, maybe we need to sort of break through all this diet confusion. And that's why the book is called the, the Pegan Diet, 21 Practical Principles for Reclaiming Your Health in a Nutritionally Confusing World. And it's really about the common sense of what we should be doing, combined with the latest science of what we need to eat to upregulate our biology. And it's focused on really a simple principle, which is that food is medicine that it's not just calories and that it's information. And with every bite, you upgrade or downgrade your biology and your health. You can either create disease or create health by what you eat in a very real practical way. And I go through in the book how, how the, the most important thing to focus on is quality. So whatever you're eating, you know, whether, whatever you're choosing to eat within the range of choices, and you know, some people may tolerate dairy, others may not. Other people may tolerate grains, other people may not. And you have to find out what's right for you because it's also about personalized medicine. But within that, you know, the focus is on quality. I mean, is a feedlot cow the same as a wild elk or a kangaroo meat or even a grass-finished cow? No. Is a wild blueberry the same as a carbohydrate, as the same as, as uh, soda? No, it's both carbohydrates. So the question is, what should you be eating to upgrade your, bi upgrade your biology? And that's really the, the key principle, is that food is medicine and that it's personalized, because we're all different. Yeah, so... Um the individualizing of it is complicated, right? Mm, to some degree, but not really. I mean, you do it every day. I mean, I always joke and I say the best doctor in the room is your own body. Listen to it. You know, if you, if you become vegan and you get bloated and you feel terrible and weak and tired and, you know, you lose your sex drive and your period and your hair starts falling out and, you know, yeah, probably not the best diet for you, right? But <laughs> if, you're, if you're eating a diet that's, for example, uh, more based on, on protein and vegetables and you feel like you lose weight and you feel good and your energy is good, that's probably better for you. So it's really about listening to your own body. And within that, there's a lot to be done around understanding your medical history, your family history, your, uh, your biology, just do some regular blood tests. And I talk in one of the practical principles is leveraging personalized nutrition for optimal health. And that mm -hmm. involves, you know, some more sophisticated stuff if you want, uh, including testing for food sensitivities, testing for your, your um, gut microbiome, looking at what's going on with your nutritional levels, looking at your, your metabolic profile, your lipids and blood sugar and insulin. So we can really tell a lot from really simple information that we can gather about what we should be doing. Uh, and so I always say we don't want people's ideology to trample over their biology, right? If, if you're if you have an idea, oh, I should be vegan, but your body is yelling no, you should listen to your body. And I think yeah. that's what often people get stuck in an ideology and they think they should do this or should do that. And then their health deteriorates and they don't know why, because it's supposed to be good for you, but it might not be good for you. It might be good for somebody else. Yeah, I know, for example, I had quit meat years ago and I'm pretty disciplined when I quit something, I quit something and I got so exhausted and my anemic levels like just were off the charts and so i was like well i guess yeah. i should introduce some red meat back into my life and then i did and got better and then i cut, I cut it again and then had the same result and i was like okay i guess this is like for sure like i can't cut red meat out so i kept poultry yeah. out yeah um and and all of that and you know what's interesting is i cut chicken and my i had a thyroid nodule and we were keeping an eye on it and out of nowhere, when I got my um, ultrasound, they're like, well, it's significantly shrunk. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe it was the chicken. <laughs> I mean, there's so many hormones in all the meat yeah. that we eat. That's so right. you would think That's that right. perhaps that was why. But yeah. I feel like I feel like we all are so um, diet crazy 
and everyone's like, let's do keto, let's do paleo, let's do all these things. And what I find with the pig and diet is it really is just eat healthy and get good sourced food. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really, all, yeah, it's really about, you know, what are the foundational principles of good nutrition and it's inclusive. It's not exclusive. It's not dogmatic. It's flexible. It's adaptable to many dietary preferences, cultural preferences, taste preferences. And it's really about understanding how do you guide your nutrition decisions. And, and if you pick up anything to eat, you should be asking yourself one simple question. Is this going to hurt me or, or heal me? Is this going to help me or harm me? And, and is this medicine that's going to be good medicine or toxic medicine, right? If you pick up a Twinkie, that's toxic medicine. If you pick up an avocado, that's good medicine. It's not that hard to, to, to think about. And I, I often joke and I say that, uh, you know, uh, as I speak a lot in churches, I say it's really easy to figure out what to eat. You ask yourself a simple question. Did God make this or did man make this, right? Did God make an avocado? Yeah. Did he make a Twinkie? No. Pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in your life, do you have your moments? I, I have I have a lot of, um, you know, flexibility in my diet, and I, I'm not dogmatic about it, but I, I have, you know, one rule, which is I don't eat things that aren't food, right? I don't eat food like substances that is most of the American diet. 60% of so our diet. So things that are in bags. Come- that are in boxes. Yeah, I mean, most of our diet comes from three ingredients, right? Soy, turned into refined soybean oil, high fructose corn syrup from corn, and refined white flour, which is uh, a not what we used to be eating as wheat. It's a very different form of wheat that's got much more gluten in it. It has much more starch in it. It has preservative, uh, preservatives that cause neurologic issues like calcium propionate, even sprayed with glyphosate, which is a weed killer that kills your microbiome and causes cancer. So like, those are made into all size, shapes, colors, forms of chemically extruded food-like substances that, that really should not be part of our diet. So will I eat Skittles? No. Will I eat uh, actually a nice chocolate bar that's made from real ingredients like huge chocolate? Yeah. You know, will I have, you know, uh, you know, uh, Twizzlers? No. But will, you know, I eat a piece of real licorice? Sure. You know, like, so I think it's really about what you're eating and is it a real food? Is it something mm-hmm. that's been, you know, made by nature or God, or is it something that was designed in a laboratory as a science project? Because yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you understand the biology, and, this is, and I go through this in the book, if you understand the biology of how food works in your body, it literally controls every biological system. It controls your microbiome, your immune system, your, dige- your, your, your energy system, your mitochondria, which is the, how you make energy, your detox system, your hormones, your brain chemistry, even what you're made of structurally. So you, you literally are communicating with every bite messages to every system in your body. And if you are putting in you know, garbage code basically into your body, you're going to get a lot of bugs in your system, otherwise known as disease. Uh, and it's so powerful. It doesn't, and it doesn't take a long time. You know, right now we're in a horrible time of COVID and people are worried about their immune systems. And they're just thinking, well, I'm just going to be at home and eat, you know, junk because it make me feel better and I'm having comfort foods. And people are gaining the quarantine 15 or the COVID-19, you know, pounds. And... And that's the worst possible thing we could do because we know that you're three times more likely to end up in the ICU and die if you're obese. Uh, and and for every little, basically every little bit your weight goes up, your risk of COVID gets worse and your risk of getting really sick and dying gets worse. And it has to do with our poor metabolic health, which can take years to develop. But it turns out that within weeks, you can reverse your metabolic poor health. You may not lose all the weight, but just by changing the food that goes in, you change your biology. Now here's, here's a perfect example with gastric bypass, they literally see people with 400 pounds with diabetes that goes away in two weeks or a week. Wow. Right? But then they, they said, oh, maybe it's the hormone changes and we staple the stomach and we do all these things. And then they actually did a study where they looked at people who had gastric bypass and they went on the gastric bypass diet. People who were also obese and matched the same way, but who didn't have a gastric bypass, they just went on the gastric bypass diet. Basically the same diet they'd given people after. There was no difference. Both of them reversed diabetes in two weeks. Both of them got extremely metabolically healthy very quickly. So right now during, during COVID, it's more important than ever to upregulate your immune system by upgrading your diet. Well, and also I think a lot of people would think, oh, well, I'm taking my vitamin C, I'm taking my vitamin D, I'm taking the things that they say is good to prevent COVID. But if you're eating Doritos and pizza every night, yeah, you know, I mean, that's probably listen, not gonna sh- work. 
No, sugar and starch, which is, again, 60% of our diet, are immune suppressants. So if, if you're eating that stuff, your immune system can't function well. If you're obese, you're more likely to get sick. You're more likely to end up in the hospital. You're more likely to die. You're more likely to transmit the virus longer. I mean, you're less likely to respond to vaccines even. If you're getting a vaccine, it, your immune system can't function as well to re respond to the vaccine as well. So it's a really serious time for us to double down on our health. And it's really part of why I wrote The Pegan Diet. Now is just try to get people to understand that it's not that hard to reclaim their health. It's not that hard to reset their diet and follow simple principles about how to eat and what to eat that aren't extreme, that aren't you know, ex onerous and difficult. And that within that, there's a wide variety of ways to eat that are healthful. But if you follow simple principles of eating real food, getting rid of the junk, understanding that food is medicine, and listening to your body, it's, it's, it works pretty good for most people. I always think that if we looked at ourselves, like our body is our vehicle, it's our vessel, but if we looked at our bodies, like we do our cars, right? When our car makes noises, we take it to the mechanic. <laughs> like when our bodies make noises, we're like, shush, I'm busy. I don't have time to go to the doctor. And right. also our car needs gas to go and to work mm -hmm. for all the systems to work. Well, if you start to pour something other than gas in the car, it's probably not going to work. So exactly. if you exactly. think of your body like that, we're putting all these foreign substances in because it's become acceptable in the world to say, oh yeah, I'm just, you know, eating junk food because I love junk food and, you know, that's just me. But your body is not set up to handle that. So listen, I love, I love having, I had pizza two days ago. It was the most glorious moment of my life <laughs> in a long time. I had the best pizza in the world, but I'm not eating it every day. Right. It's once in a while so that I know I can have those moments. But for the most part, I eat pretty healthy. Um, well, I let's just let's just take pizza. Let's just take pizza for example, like and break it yeah. down because I think you know you can get pizza that's made with this flour that's really problematic that I just described. That's made from traditional wheat. You can get cheese that's made from feedlot cows that are pumped full of hormones and antibiotics that have been hybridized to create a very inflammatory form of protein called A A A one casein, which is very harmful for your gut and can cause cancer. Uh, you may be eating, you know, uh, what you think tastes good like a pizza, but maybe there's another alternative. Maybe you can make the pizza out of uh, more heirloom wheat or spelt or other grains that are, are actually uh, not so problematic. Or maybe you want to make cauliflower pizza, or maybe you want to use goat or sheep cheese, which have A2 casein. So you can upgrade the ingredients of whatever you're eating, mm -hmm. which will have profoundly different effects. Even though it's pizza, it may be quite different. Or even yeah. if you get an A2 cow, which, which are available. So you can get an A2 cow, you can get a different strain of wheat. You can use, you know, for example, different fermenting processes that allow, like, for example, sourdough that breaks down some of the problematic things in wheat, for example. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of nuances to how you can actually upgrade each meal so you don't have to deprive yourself. So, I, for example, in the pecan diet, I have brownies, I have pancakes, right? You can get brownies and pancakes, but what brownies and what pancakes? So are you going to have, you know, white flour pancakes made with, you know, factory farm eggs and, you know, factory farm milk in the mix and, and refined soybean oil? Or are you going to make my chai buckwheat pancakes with almond flour? And I use this special buckwheat from the Himalayas that has 132 phytochemicals that rejuvenate your immune system. It has all the chai spices like cloves and nutmeg and cinnamon and ginger, which have powerful medicinal properties. I use pasture-raised eggs, which are full of uh, the, the colorful antioxidants. You see the yellow, dark yellow color, as well as a lot of vitamins. So... There's all sorts of ways to upgrade your diet and still mm -hmm. enjoy delicious food. So those are very different pancakes than you'd get at IHOP, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're I like that idea of upgrading. And I also like the idea of, um, of the replacements. Before we get to the phytonutrients and the phytochemicals, I want to talk about that. I want to ask, you know, in the supermarket now, you're going in and you're seeing all these alternatives, right? they're still packaged. And when you look at the ingredients on the back, it's like, you know, non-dairy cheeses and all these things. Are those just as bad? Yeah, it depends on what, right? So, I mean, obviously not all packaged food is bad. It, it depends on the ingredients. And people often look at the nutrition facts, but they don't read the fine print on the ingredient list. So if you read anything on the ingredient list, it's not food, right? It's probably not good for you. If there's ingredients there you wouldn't have in your cupboard, like butylated hydroxytoluene or maltodextrin or carrageenan, you probably shouldn't be eating it, right? 
if it says, you know, tomatoes, water, and salt, or sardines, olive oil, and salt, like you know what's in the can or what's in the jar, right? And I think I think it's an important distinction. So you have to become a very smart uh, ingredient list reader. But for for most of us, you know, we we don't want to be eating uh, those those weird non food ingredients because they're so harmful to us, and we we can swap them out for better things. And like I the think, Beyond uh, Meat burgers, all of those. Yeah. So let's just let's just take Impossible Burger for example. So that sounds great, right? This is oh wow, we're gonna plant based burger. Or it bleeds like a regular burger. It's juicy. It tastes good. Uh, you know, as Burger King has it, that should be your first warning sign. <laughs> you know. And, the, and the, the sales job is great and there's billions of dollars invested and everybody thinks it's going to save the planet because we're going to get rid of, you know, factory farming of animals. But when you, you know, drill down into it, it has 47 novel proteins. It has a GMO um, soy that's used, which is sprayed with glyphosate that destroys the soil, contributes to climate change and uses, you know, uh, more um, resources than regenerative raised beef. So if you have a regeneratively raised beef burger versus a Impossible Burger, you're actually um, adding three and a half kilos of carbon with the Impossible Burger, and you're removing three and a half kilos of carbon with a regeneratively raised beef burger. Not to mention that the the, the Impossible Burger also is full of uh, it's made basically it's a factory made science project, right? And it's also mm -hmm. full of glyphosate because they spray the they spray the soybeans with this Roundup weed killer, and we know that glyphosate's been linked to cancer, and it also is, a, is an antibiotic in a sense. It kills your own microbiome. In an animal studies, they found there's 110 times as much glyphosate in an Impossible Burger as is required to destroy your microbiome. <laughs> so, is it a great food? I would not. I would never eat it. I mean, I would. I would. I've tried it once because I, I did I, before. I kind of looked into it. So I said, "Oh, try this. It's great." And I, I was like, mm, "I don't know." So I, I think you know. Wow. And, and, and yeah, and I think the idea that all meat is bad, you know, is another topic we can get into. But it really depends. Yeah, I would on like what. that. Because I want you to explain regenerative, regenerative, regenerative. Oh my God, I can't say the word. Regenerative. Regenerative. <laughs> regenerative. Yes. Um, and I also saw in the book that you mentioned sources, which is really helpful for people because mm -hmm. trying to figure out where to get the right meat is so stressful. We had Thrive Market as a, a supporter of the show for a while. Yeah. And I loved going to Thrive Market and I still do because. I know they're sourcing everything properly, so I don't have to do the thinking. They do it for me. That's right. Yeah, so meat meat's a complicated thing because we've been trained one in the 70s and meat had saturated fat. It was bad for us. We all stopped eating meat. And then now we're hearing that it's bad for the planet and the factory farming of animals is horrible for the animals and the meat that it produces is unhealthy. And all that's true. So factory farming of animals should be banned. It's bad for the animals, it's bad for the humans, it's bad for the planet. No argument there. That doesn't mean that all meat is bad, right? And it's uh, as sort of a uh, Russ Conzer, who's a regenerative farmer, said, it's not the cow, it's the how, right? So if, you, mm -hmm. if you're eating a feedlot cow that's uh, grown in a way that, that actually drives uh, more inflammatory molecules in the fat, for example, through the, the refined oils that it gets from soybean oil and, and, the, and the corn and all the food that they're eating, from the hormones and antibiotics that are pumped into them, from all the junk that they eat. They, they serve them candies, Skittles, ground up animal feces, I mean, all kinds of stuff. What does that do? If you are what you eat, what is that becoming? That's very different, which, which, and that meat basically causes inflammation and can and contribute to disease, and I think we shouldn't be eating it. On the other hand, if you eat, for example, a, a grass-finished cow that's feeding on hundreds of different plants, that's uh, basically absorbing the phytochemicals from those plants. It's having higher levels of omega-3 fats, higher levels of nutrients, higher levels of antioxidants, and has now we've discovered these phytochemicals that are from eating all these different plants that have medicinal properties, very different effect on your biology. And they've done the studies on this. I mean, if you look, for example, at uh, one study where they looked at kangaroo meat versus in Australia versus feedlot meat, same amount of meat, ounce per ounce, profoundly different effects on biology. The feedlot meat raised inflammation in the body, the kangaroo meat lowered inflammation in the body. So meat is not meat is not meat, right? And I think people will have to understand the nuances around it. A lot of the studies we have that show meat's harmful, one, they were done in a time when people who, who were told not to eat meat because it's bad for your health. So those who ate meat didn't care about their health. And you look at their characteristics, yeah, they weighed more, they ate 800 calories more a day, they ate more sugar, processed food, less fruits and vegetables, they didn't take their vitamins, they didn't exercise, they smoked more, they drank more. Of course they had more disease. You know, when you look at uh, other studies that look at 
vegetarians or meat eaters who shopped at health food stores, they're, they're both were benefited. So the death rate reduced in half for both of them. And it wasn't, it's not the meat, it's what you eat the meat with. If you're eating, you know, McDonald's hamburger and french fries and soda as your meat, that's different than having a small piece of grass finished meat with, you know, three quarters of your plate as vegetables, right? <laughs> Full of phytochemicals and fiber. I mean, even what you cook your meat with or how you cook it matters. If you grill it at high temperatures, it produces dangerous compounds. If you marinate it, for example, and you have some type of acidic marinades like vinegar, it actually changes. Uh, the effect on, on the grilling, so it, it produces less of these chemicals. Or if you cook it slowly with lots of spices, it's powerful. I mean, you you actually see the in Morocco they cook they cook uh, the meat with tremendous amounts of spices, and they don't they don't have the same rates of disease or cancer as we do. The Maasai, you know, they add I think twelve different spices to their milk and like twenty eight spices to their meat, and all those spices have beneficial effects in changing any properties that might be harmful. So it really gets nuanced about what you can do with, with understanding the quality of what you're eating. And that's really the, the main take home here. Yeah. What about like a lot of the stuff I was learning in there, there were a lot of like, make sure you get this for this part of your health, whether it was like autoimmune diseases or cardiac or whatever. There's so many, like we don't look at food in terms of, you know, let me get as many nutrients as I can in, right? Like we're all creatures of habit. We eat the same things every day. Um, I've done enough of these interviews where, you know, if my dad makes asparagus, we've been living in Connecticut together when my mom's got cancer and we're all taking care of her. So like one night he made asparagus and I'm like, no, I don't really like asparagus, but I want to eat it to get those nutrients, to get the variety in. Talk to everybody about how important it is to have a colorful diet. You talk about yeah. the rainbow. So this is really important for people to understand that, you know, we know, we know what's in food, right? We know protein, fat, carbs, vitamins and minerals, fiber. Okay. That's all fine. And yet it turns out that there's 25,000 compounds in plant foods called phytochemicals. And now we're finding them even in animal foods who eat a lot of plants. And these phytochemicals are the unsung heroes of health. They, they actually train our biology to work better, to optimize our immune system, optimize our microbiome, optimize our ability to produce energy, detoxify, balance our hormones, and they're neglected. And people don't think these are essential because they're, well, whatever, you don't really need them, but they are essential if you wanna be healthy. They, you know, the, 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 the consequence may not be an acute deficiency disease like scurvy, it might be that you get heart attacks or cancer or diabetes or Alzheimer's later in life or arthritis or autoimmune disease or whatever you're getting because you're not including these compounds. And there's 25,000 of these compounds and the Rockefeller Foundation is creating a periodic table where they are spent hundreds of millions of dollars to assess these phytochemicals and their properties. And they have profound effects. I'll just give you a couple of examples. So, you know, when I think about going shopping, I think literally about going to the pharmacy, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, which is <laughs> the title of my podcast, The Doctor's Pharmacy, because when I go to the grocery store, I'm looking for drugs. I'm going to the Love broccoli that. because because the broccoli has glucosinolates that I know upregulate my glutathione and detoxification. So if I'm exposed to environmental chemicals, it helps my body handle it. Or I'm going to I'm going to go, gee, I'm going to get some of those cranberries and pomegranate and green tea because I know those are special polyphenols that in there that, that actually fertilize bacteria in my gut that prevents leaky gut, helps my immune system and actually helps me prevent cancer and heart disease and autoimmune disease. Or I'm going to eat um, maybe these, these uh, the Himalayan tartary buckwheat, which is uh, the buckwheat I was telling you about, which is sort of an ancient grain that has 132 phytochemicals like quercetin, aspirin, and others that are powerful immune regulators. So they will literally kill the zombie cells, which are mute, like mutant white blood cells in our blood that cause us to age. It'll literally go and attack them like Pac-Man and kill them. So I know I'm going to get, have pancakes with this buckwheat flour that's going to upregulate my immune system. Or may, maybe I'm going to eat foods that are rich, for example, in lignans like flax seeds that are phytochemicals or, or, for example, whole kernel rye bread that actually helps to reduce insulin resistance and helps balance my hormones and might help detoxify uh, sex hormones. So it's really quite, it's quite sophisticated when you understand how to use these ingredients in food as medicines. And the simplest way to do it is you don't have to understand all that science. You have to pick a lot of colors and variety. You know, we used to eat 800 species of plants. 
Now 60% of our diet is three crops, wheat, corn, and soy, and 90% and is 12 crops. So we need to expand the variety and eat weird food and eat different colors and, and eat the rainbow. I love that. I love thinking about going to the supermarket. I just wrote a note. It's like how to make your supermarket your pharmacy run. I think that should be the title of this show. Um, because Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine. And I feel like we forget that that notion that we grew up with, you are what you eat from your head down to your feet. I always remember that. And I, I've watched my dad. He's a type one diabetic his whole life. And He's 76 and he can outwork, outrun, outdo anybody in their 20s. He's yeah, a beast because all he eats is fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And very that's little right. meat. That's so, right. And probably very low starch and sugar. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. introduced some starch into his diet because he used to plummet his sugar levels because he did so much manual labor. He couldn't, you know, keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but I think that it's really important for us to think about it like that. And when I look at your book, I marked so many pages in here of things that we should be thinking of to help different, you know, ailments, whether it was even like anxiety and depression, talk about what you should be eating. If you have anxiety and depression, how do we make our, our pharmacy there? Well, you know, Maria, most of us don't really connect the dots between our food and our mood, but it is the single biggest driver. Uh, and I'll just say a quick story and then I'll explain how. You know, I was uh, working on a big church project called the Daniel Plan, where we got we created a faith-based wellness program. We had 15,000 people go through, and they lost a quarter million pounds in a year. And at the six-week sort of reunion after we started, we, we had people come back and share their stories. And this woman came up to me and she said, Dr. Hyman, I just have to tell you, I, you know, I, I've been depressed all my life. I've been in and out of psychiatric hospitals for years. My marriage is falling apart. I'm about to get fired from my job. I, I was on a whole bucket full of antidepressant and psychiatric medications and nothing's helped me. But you know, when I changed my diet and I followed what you're talking about, which is essentially the Pegan diet principles, she said, my depression went away in three days. She said, is that possible? And I said, yeah, it's definitely possible yeah. if it's something you're eating. And I, 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 for years I would treat people's physical ailments, right? Using functional medicine. And then their psychiatric problems would go away. And I'd go, well, what's happening here? And I, I so jokingly call myself the accidental psychiatrist because their panic attacks <laughs> would go away or their depression would go away or their bipolar disease would go away or their ADD or even autism would improve because the brain is connected to everything else. So most brain disorders are inflammatory diseases. And we're eating a diet that is so inflammatory that causes brain inflammation. And your brain doesn't have a way to go out if, it, if it's inflamed, right? It, but it, it changes your behavior or your mood or your thinking, right? And so we, we basically take out the stuff that's harmful, often gluten, often, uh, uh, obviously all the processed foods. I mean, I, I, you know, sugar is one of the worst depressants out there, obviously alcohol and many other things that can be harmful. And then we add in all the things that, that help the brain uh, and, and function better. For example, the omega-3 fats and uh, and lots of nuts and seeds with have tryptophan, berries with, with antioxidant prothesanidins. And so we, we really just upgrade your diet. And this isn't just a theory. Uh, there are large clinical trials that have been done looking at this. One is called the SMILES trials, where they took you know, a large group of people and half of them got healthy food and half of them just ate their traditional crappy diet and they were all depressed. And at the end of the study, the people who ate the healthy diet you know, had results that out, outperformed any medication for depression. <laughs> In terms of their their mood or you look at for example even worse studies of behavior um, you know violence and, and 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 prisoners and you see in prisons violent crime goes down by 56 percent when you feed people healthy food and 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 when you add a multivitamin it goes down by 80 percent in juvenile delinquent centers they swapped out junk food and healthy food for you know uh for junk food i mean they, they gave them healthy food instead of junk food and there was a 91% reduction in, in violent behavior, aggression, lashing out, the 75% reduction in restraints, and get this, 100% reduction in suicides. Now, this is the third leading cause of death in this age group. And to have something that causes 100% reduction in suicides, when this is a massive problem in teenagers, should be headline news. You don't hear about it. If there was a drug, it would be a multi-billion dollar blockbuster overnight. Take this yeah. drug, 100% reduction in suicides. But food is that powerful. 
and people don't understand how powerful food is. They think, oh, you know, maybe it doesn't work. But it's, it also depends on the, on the medicine and the dose, right? If you say, well, you know, if you're drinking 12 Cokes a day and you drink six, you're not gonna, <laughs> you know, it's not gonna help much, right? But yeah. if you make dramatic changes in your diet, you can see dramatic effects. If I say, well, you have a headache, I'm gonna give you a milligram of aspirin. Is that gonna work? No, you need the right medicine and the right dose. So Good you point. need the, right, you need, and, and doctors don't know how to apply food as medicine. So they say, well, eat less and exercise more, or, you know, try to eat more fruits and vegetables, don't have so much sugar. That's not helpful advice because it, it doesn't give people a plan or an idea or the specifics. And that's really why I wrote The Peak and Diet, which is a guidebook, really. It's a sort of a very easy, quick to read book that gives you all the news you need to use to identify what you should eat in each category of food and also how to eat for longevity and eat for your mood and eat for your gut and you know, how to feed your kids and how to eat on a budget and a lot, a lot of practical things. Even eat like a regenitarian, how to eat that's good for you and the planet. So and sort of distills all the science we know about nutrition, combines it with common sense and emerging ideas about how we create health and functional medicine and give people a roadmap. Uh, and I think that's, that's what people don't understand, that there is, there, is such a, there is such a deep amount of science, and most of it's just being ignored because doctors know nothing about it. We're not trained about it in medical school. We don't Why? understand the link. Why? I think it's an, just a historical artifact. You know, we, we thought that, you know, diseases were caused by some th in things like entities, like uh, infection, so it doesn't matter what you eat, and, and that things don't really, aren't really that connected to food. If you go to the doctor and, and you say, well, is my autoimmune disease connected to food? Is my, you know, is my uh, digestive issues connected to food? Is my Alzheimer's or heart disease? They say, well, maybe, you know, don't eat too much saturated fat, or, you know, don't eat too many calories, or, you know, if you're overweight, if you're diabetic, oh, don't eat so much sugar. There's some, there's some understanding, but there's like, there's definitely not an approach which says, okay, well, you have diabetes, I'm going to reverse your diabetes. We manage your diabetes. But, yeah. You know, for some patients who've gotten way down the road of type 2 diabetes and are very, very overweight, they may need more extreme intervention, right? It's always like the dose, right? If you have, if you have like a, you know, a little, a little sprained ankle, you can, you know, take an Advil, but if you break your hip, you probably need a narcotic, right? Yeah. So, so sometimes you need like, if for type 2 diabetics, they're using ketogenic diets and reversing 60%, 60% of diabetes. Like these are people who had advanced diabetes on insulin, 100% get off the most of the medication, over 90% either get off or reduce their insulin, and their weight loss is dramatic, and, and because they're using the, the right medicine and the right dose, right? And mm -hmm. that's what, when you understand how to use food as medicine, not everybody needs the same thing. Yeah, well, I feel like also it's probably, I mean, my layman's opinion is, it's a combination of doctors not having enough time. And then also, you know, the faith factor in the patient to actually do the hard work, right? Our discipline levels are really challenging when yeah. it comes to consumption because we're being advertised to constantly like, oh, have this candy bar. It's gonna make you feel so much happier. And so I feel like sometimes it's easier it's like those Coke manage. commercials where like everybody's happy, right? Happy, 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 right? It's like, oh, Yeah, God. it's easier to yeah. manage because, you know, like I remember when my mom was diagnosed with glioblastoma, the, the team came to check on her. It wasn't her neurologist. It was like a, a, another team. And I said, hey, I've been researching this ketogenic diet. This was five years ago. And, yeah, right. um, and they kind of like, they said, you know, we watch patients, families torture them all the time. Just let her eat what she wants. And I instantly thought to myself, oh my God, you think she's just going to die and I should just let her eat what she wants. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when I consulted Dr. Black at Cedars, he was like, you know what? There isn't enough research yet, but I see I'm looking at it too. And I think it's interesting. He's like, go for it. And so I modified it because I didn't believe that that much consumption of like fats and dairy was healthy either. So I mm -hmm. modified it. My mom's still here over four and a half years later. Yeah. Well, and, ketogenic diets have been shown to be effective for brain cancer and for well, yeah. epilepsy and, now, and for autism and for Alzheimer's and for many, many issues related to the brain. Yeah. Well, her oncologist, I think it was about a year ago, said that he has been watching a patient shrink his own brain tumor, glioblastoma, with just a keto diet. That's right. That's right. That's great. I and if like, the doctor's open to it, that's great. And if they pay attention to what their patients are telling them, that's great. But most doctors like, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind's made up. Diet doesn't work. You're going to 
go ahead and try it, but it doesn't really matter. You've got a terminal cancer. And it turns yeah. out that many people are saving themselves by actually using food as medicine. Yeah, well, that's why I believe in this so much. I've seen it in my own family. And I wonder, you know, even when you were talking about the, the mind and the gut, obviously we know about the vagus nerve. We were just on the, we just had Dr. Oz on the show. We were talking about the vagus nerve as well. But, you know, when you're even like for me, I have a benign tumor. I have a meningioma. Um, and I cut sugar out in October, partly because of my A1C levels kind of peaking a little bit and, and not wanting to have to deal with it officially. Um, but also wondering if it will shrink what's left in there after surgery. Do you feel like sugar feeds A, cancer, and B, even benign tumors? Yes, I think it feeds cancer. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there's no doubt that sugar feeds cancer. In fact, the test they do to determine whether you've got cancer or not is they, they starve you of sugar or carbohydrates for a few days. Then they give you a radioactive dose of sugar. And the sugar, like a laser beam, goes right to the cancer cells because the cancers love sugar. And That's the gadolinium, to, right? What they shoot you yeah. up with in the MRI? Well, it's a no. It's a PET scan. It's a different. It's a different oh, okay. scan. Uh, and it's uh, it's it's just stunning that, that that we know the data on this. We know that, for example, the majority of the big cancers, colon cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, these are all linked to insulin resistance and obesity and diabetes and. And, and they are fueled by sugar. It's, it, you know, the cancer cells can't run on fat. And so there's a lot of data now we're being done, uh, studies being done on ketogenic diets for cancer, uh, both in terms of accelerating and improving response to chemo and radiation and reducing side effects, which is great, but also improving outcomes. Um, and Siddhartha Mukherjee, who wrote The Emperor of All Maladies, one of the top cancer doctors in the world, uh, you know, was chatting with me recently. And he said, Mark, you know, really the, the key to to addressing cancer, you know, we've discovered one of the biggest drivers, like sugar, right? He's like, how did you know? I'm like, yeah, well, I've been studying this <laughs> for like we've 30 known. years. <laughs> we've but known, he, you just wouldn't but, admit it, none of you. Well, but, but now they're doing rigorous clinical trials and they're seeing, for example, animal studies, complete reversal of stage four melanoma, stage four pancreatic cancer, things that just don't get cured. And, and now they're doing clinical trials in humans. And it's, it's fascinating to see that, you know, we can, change our biology by what we eat and if we use food as medicine is no more powerful drug on the planet wow yeah i i like i said i did it with my mom i watched her and then when she started cheating i started coaxing her with gifts i'm like if you quit sugar mom we will take you shopping and buy whatever you want <laughs> right right or, right but and the um, thing the thing of the point about the food as medicine and whatever i'm talking about is that it's about quality right so um it's about the information in food. So that's really the purpose of the vegan diet is whatever you're eating. If you're eating, for example, dairy and you want to eat dairy, which dairy should you eat? Should you eat a feedlot cow that's hybridized to produce tons of milk with high levels of this inflammatory molecule called A1 casein that's been linked to autoimmune disease, cancer, and, and type 1 diabetes and digestive issues and all kinds of immune inflammatory issues? that's also full of hormones and antibiotics? Or are you gonna eat a uh, dairy that's, for example, from an A2 cow that's an heirloom cow, or maybe that's grass-fed and has none of those issues, or maybe even better yet, sheep or goat dairy, which has, again, A2 casein, which is not a, not a problem for most people. It can be well tolerated. So, you know, if you're gonna eat dairy, which dairy? If you're gonna eat meat, which meat? If you're gonna eat nuts or seeds, which ones? If you're gonna eat grains or beans, which ones? And it's, it's really important that, that is that people understand that they can have a wide variety of foods, but the key here is focusing on which ones are the most potent in terms of healing properties in medicine mm -hmm. and, and which ones should you not be eating that are going to degrade so, your health. With dairy, I feel like like that's the challenge. Like for the everyday person, you're going into Stop and Shop, you're going into Ralph's, you're going into whatever your supermarket is mm -hmm, called. Mm -hmm. How do you know which one to get? How do you know which way to go? Like I know with Thrive Market, you know, I can get my meats. I can't necessarily get my dairy there unless something's changed and I missed it. Um, mm -hmm. But when I go into the supermarket, I see all these eggs and I'm like, which eggs and which milk? Yeah. And yeah. How do you do it's, it? It's, it's tough. So, you, you know, in the book, The Pegan Diet, which is also, the subtitle is 21 Practical Principles for Reclaiming Your Health in a Nutritionally Confusing World, because we're all confused. There's specifics on where to find what foods. So, 
Uh, for example, you can join a community supported agriculture. You can go to your local farmer's market, which have better sourced ingredients. You can go to places like Thrive Market online, which has regeneratively raised uh, beef and, and other uh, sustainably sourced products. And also, I was very, very fanatical about it, all the ingredients in their food that you can buy for 25 to 50% off. If you want to buy grass-fed meat, you might not be able to get it at your local store. You might have to go online and go to Mariposa Ranch or Belcampo Meats and, and buy direct from the ranchers. And you might even say, well, gee, you know, I can't... I can't just buy a little bit, but maybe because uh, it's a little more expensive, but maybe if I get a cow share and I buy half a cow or a whole cow with 10 of my friends and we can get it sent to us chopped up and we can divide it up and we can have uh, meat at less per serving than a McDonald's hamburger and it's far better for us. So there are ways to actually do it on a budget. I go through all that in there and I go through actually where to find the ingredients and how to find them. And it's, you know, with now with the internet and the ability to get stuff anywhere, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple to do the right thing. Yeah, I don't remember seeing anything for dairy, but it could be wrong. I felt like the meat was a little easier in there. Yeah, was well, there something a, for dairy a2, that I missed? Yeah, sure. There's a A2, A2 casein milk, which you can buy, or you can you know, find uh, often in most stores, you can find goat or sheep cheese or goat or sheep uh, yogurt. Uh, so there's, okay. you know, you know, so there, there are alternatives. What about the soy milks and the almond milks? Like one of the things that I have noticed that's kind of bothered me is I keep seeing this gum ingredient and I'm no, like, that doesn't no. sound good. No, <laughs> right. Otherwise it all separates. It's sort of an emulsifier. So a lot of these gums, for example, in these soy milks are carrageenan, which sounds natural. It comes from seaweed, but it turns out it's actually quite challenging because it's actually uh, a product that can cause what we call leaky gut, which means that it damages the lining of your gut and you end up leaking food proteins and bacteria into your bloodstream causes an immune response that's pretty damaging and you end up in this really horrible cycle of inflammation so really really important to stay away from all these weird ingredients and you can find brands that don't have them so i'd be really careful about which brands you find that don't have these weird is that like the non-gmo ones some of them are non-gmo but you know a lot of them have sugar a lot of them have <laughs> barley malt which is gluten so you got you got to be kind of a, a very fanatical label reader and just try to get the ones with just simple ingredients you know or make so, your own which i which i have recipes for in my cookbook in my book yeah what about like if you go to whole foods are the milks in there i mean i wish someone would just create a supermarket where everything was just perfect in there and then you don't have to worry like Thrive, I mean, Thrive Market. Close. Thrive Market is close to that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. even I mean, in Whole Foods, you can get into trouble. You know, there's still plenty of sugar and junk and. Plenty. I know. You I might look... not. You might not find high fructose corn syrup. You might not find trans fats. You might not find a lot of you know, uh, common additives and colors and dyes and pesticides. But there's still you can still get into trouble, right? If you have a lot of gluten free yeah. cookies, it's still cookies, right? Exactly. Um, I'm gonna let. Um, Kevin or the team jump in before I kind of wrap this up in case there's anything. I know there's tons of things I wanted to talk about, but um, we got so much in. Was there anything you guys were really curious to follow up on? Yeah, Doc, are, um, are supplements, do you recommend any supplements at all or are you just pure food? Do you want me to answer that question? Yeah, please. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I always say that uh, nobody needs supplements, but only under certain conditions. They have to hunt and gather their own wild food. They have to only drink pure, clean water, be exposed yeah. to no chronic stress, no environmental toxins. They have to yeah. go to sleep with the sun and wake up with the sun. And, uh, and they have to be very active all day long. And if, if that's you, then no, you don't need any supplements. <laughs> but okay. I don't think that describes most humans today on the planet. And what we know, uh, this is not a theory, that what we know from large, large government studies uh, called the NHANES studies where they go and test people, tens and tens of thousands of people, is that over 90% of Americans are deficient in one or more nutrients at the minimum level to prevent deficiency disease. So how much vitamin C do you need to not get scurvy? Not very much, right? Maybe 30, 60 milligrams. And 10% of the population is deficient at that level. Or how much vitamin D do you need to not get rickets? Not very much. But how much do you need for optimal immune function or prevent COVID? A lot more. And even at that minimum level, 90% are deficient. Omega-3s, magnesium, folate, uh, zinc, iron, uh, vitamin D, uh, these are really common nutritional deficiencies. And I, I do think that, that particular, given the depletion of our diet, the depletion of our soils, I mean, which are depleted organic matter, which is required to extract the nutrients from the soil because of how we farm, 
that we do all need a good multi fish oil and vitamin D. I think those are just basic for most of us. And I think it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be less than a dollar a day. And I think, you know, we just see the, the you know, the, these large tr clinical trials where they try to study these as drugs and they don't show benefit. It's because the study design is wrong. It's because it they don't take into account, you know, a lot of factors that influence whether someone responds or not. So, for example, if, if someone's eating a lot of fish and they take an omega-3 supplement, it might not do anything. But if someone's mm -hmm. severely deficient, it's going to make a huge difference for them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like I always say, if you, if you don't have a headache, an aspirin doesn't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. it depends on the person. If their vitamin D level is great and they take vitamin D, there's not going to be an impact. But if their vitamin D levels are low, then it's going to have an impact. So if, and that's what we see. If there were like three to five uh, supplements that we could, just in general, I know everyone's body's different, um, but it seems like fish oil, vitamin D, would you say vitamin C, and what else would you say that we should supplement? I would say a multi-fish oil and vitamin D are basic for everybody. Okay. I think if people want to get a little more fancy, they can add a little magnesium because about 50% of us are deficient in magnesium. Okay. And then uh, if people want to add a probiotic because our guts are so messed up, that's probably a nice fifth thing. But, you, you know, I just, just a good multi fish oil and vitamin D for most people is going to do the trick. And then when it comes to vitamins, I know some of them are super processed. So do you have recommendations in yeah. terms of, you know, brands or something for the, you know, the rest of us that will get a sure. best vitamin? Uh, well, it's like anything else. You can go, you know, to CVS or Costco and buy a bunch of vitamins for pretty cheap. Uh, but the question is, how are they made? What is the form of the vitamin? Are they absorbed? Do they dissolve in your stomach? Uh, do they have fillers, additives, chemicals, preservatives? You know, what other factors are involved in, in those uh, products? And I think it's, you know, you want to, it's just like food, quality matters, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, as a physician, I prescribe products that are usually designed for physicians that are, that are more, rigorously tested that have third-party analysis of purity and potency so you know you're not getting what it's on the label and there's no weird stuff in it uh and it has no additives fillers you know allergens or uh chemicals in it that are going to be a problematic so there are companies that i use like pure encapsulations metagenics designs for health uh you know and these are these are companies i don't really have a relationship with but they they they're the ones i use for my practice and for my patients because I want them to have the best stuff. And also, you know, for example, if you go to the store, you know, I need magnesium and you get magnesium oxide, which is the cheapest form of magnesium used in most of the supplements you buy in the, you know, average store. It doesn't get absorbed well. It's not an effective form mm -hmm. of magnesium, right? So you need, you need the right form of magnesium. And it's important for people to understand that. And I think, so quality matters. Mm -hmm. and, and is it true that lamb um, is not shot up as much as other meats? That's right. Lamb is probably healthier. I mean, if you pick, if you get grass-fed lamb and, and local lamb, you can get from any uh, you know local farmers, uh, and it doesn't have tons of hormones and antibiotics. So I think I think lamb for sure is a higher quality meat uh, than than a feedlot beef. Dr. Hartman, the spices you were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Good question. Yeah. I'm so curious. What are spices like? What are they? What are the most beneficial spices? Like, if we had to pick three to five. That's a great question. So spices are really special because they're, they're concentrated sources of phytochemicals, uh, some which are not found in any other foods. And it, you know, that's why we had the spice trade, which mm -hmm. makes food taste good. But for example, if you look at certain spices like, um, like cinnamon, for example, cinnamon has amazing properties that help balance blood sugar. Or if you look at rosemary, rosemary is, is a powerful detoxifier and antioxidant. Mm -hmm. Or ginger, ginger is, is one of the most potent anti-inflammatories, antivirals. Garlic also is an antimicrobial. So any kind of spices you use are, are uh, filled with these phytochemicals that have medicinal properties. And, and I, I tend to have a lot of spices. I have a giant spice drawer. Mm -hmm. I use garlic and ginger regularly. I use all kinds of spices and even, even, you know, the spicy foods like the chilies, the curries, those are great. I mean, I love, I love making Indian food because you've got all those spices that are just so delicious and you can get the fresh spices and make your own fresh curries. You don't have to buy the mix. So I, I think it's, it's pretty fun to do that and yeah. it's delicious and makes food taste good and it's really great for you. Amazing. Thank you. And that's a great point is that these things are not in food. So it is important that we add them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I never I, thought I, I about think, it like that. Yeah, I think the more spices you add to your diet, the better off you are. That's what I was mentioning, for example, in you know, the, in Morocco, they use all these different spices, right? 
and the mm -hmm. spices help to alleviate any of the harmful effects, for example, you might get from, from oxidation from meat, so they're powerful antioxidants, anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the Maasai and the, uh, put in tons of spice in their milk and meat as a way of improving the quality. They just probably do it because it tastes good, but the downside effect, the, the upside effect is it literally can prevent any of the harmful effects you might see from inflammation that can come from these foods. And, and Doc, yeah. for the cooking of the food, I know certain thing, ways you cook can increase toxins in the food. So to pre in terms of cooking a meat, what would you recommend? Well, I, th I think clearly if you grill at high temperatures and that, that's what creates polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and heterocyclic amines and cancer-causing compounds that create ages and make you age faster. So I, I think it's really important to understand, one, if you're going to grill, you want to marinate first. And I, I mentioned that with lots of spices and, and vinegars. Second is slow cooking meat, you know, whether it's a crock pot or instant pot or whatever people are using or just uh, a Dutch oven, you know, cooking for hours slowly with lots of spices will help to, to actually improve the, the uh, one digestibility, but also will, will actually prevent any of the harmful effects from high temperature cooking. Guys, he has all of these recipes in here. I hate sardines, by the way just the idea of them. And I love that you even like gave me that in the book. You're like, okay, and if you hate them, I have a recipe that will make you love yeah, them. There, there I'm you gonna go. try it. Knowing okay. that variety is important, I will. And well, sardines, you know, are probably, uh, sardines are one of the best foods on the planet, right? Because they're low in toxins. They're super high in omega-3 fats. They're high in choline, which is great for your brain. They have calcium if you eat them with the bones. And also they're full of omega-3 fats and a great source of protein. So they are pretty much a super food. <laughs> Yeah, I, feel like, I know. I feel like I having hate them. I feel like having this book in your kitchen. Oh yeah, because I know mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of cookbooks. We did a cookbook and it was bestseller, but I feel like with this one, um, this is going to be great for us to pull out and refer to yeah. even before anything we do. It's really a, uh, just uh, a really great tool to and have. You make it easy too. Like it's not when you really think about it, it's really not that hard. And that's what I loved no. about it, Doctor Hyman. It's like. I feel yep. like the diet fads and all this stuff right now, oh my God, it's overwhelming, but you make it, it's like simple. Is it God yeah. made or is it That's man made? That's the whole point. It's the whole point. It's really simple, really take home, news to use, uh, get people out of all the spinning they have about this is good, this is bad, mm -hmm. and, and try to understand what the science says and, and yeah. use it in a way that helps you promote and create health. And you know whether you're just wanting to optimize your health and performance, it's great. Or whether you are wanting to reverse disease it's great and so all all of all of the things that we might think about using food for it's there and and, and funnily enough there's no chapter on weight loss in the book <laughs> on purpose yeah. because it's a byproduct. When, you create, when you create health weight loss happens automatically you don't have to focus on weight loss or calorie restriction just focus on quality focus on taste and flavor mm -hmm. and to focus on the the goodness in food and you'll be fine I, you know, it's yeah, funny. I, it's it's always like the great gateway to get people to do it. But I, I feel like this century is about depression, mental health. I mean, it's only going to yeah. get worse. And I, I think that knowing that these foods can 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 cur curb, curb or cure mm -hmm. that is so important and so attractive, mm -hmm. especially suicide rates right now with um with young people. It's so yeah. so exploding. I have to ask one last question of my husband, Kevin, yes, honey, um, how has this episode changed your views on your diet? Um, I mean, I'm going to get the book where I'm going to, every, I'm, I'm in like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm in, I'm in. I read the, 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 the one, <laughs> he had one chapter, um, that Kelsey, what was the one you said? It was the gut, on gut. About your gut. Yeah. Cause we've been on a bit of a journey with Kelsey's gut. You know, she's, she's, um, I was telling him a little bit. It's about, protruding, yeah. and you know, and and she, yeah. this has been a ten-year thing, mm -hmm. and we're really trying to focus on it. But I, I, I've realized with myself too, I've noticed days that I'll, I'll see you know photos of myself, and I'll see my stomach protruding, but it's not fat. And I'm realizing now it's just some you know there's a lot of wrong things, and it's obviously because of how I'm eating, and I, I I'm just excited to like, I'm excited to attack too. Mm -hmm. Food yeah. is mood. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, I mean, I wrote a whole book about that called The Ultra Mind Solution over 10 years ago. And I talked a lot about these things. And it, it's just striking how powerful upgrading your diet is for your brain, not just in terms of mood, but everything sleep, anxiety, um, focus, cognitive function, energy. I mean, it's just, it, it's such a powerful connection. And I just am shocked. Even the smartest people I know 
have no idea how much what they eat affects how they think and feel and their mood. Yeah, I'm going to now say from now on and Heal Squad, I know you're watching and listening. Every time we go to the supermarket, we are never calling it the supermarket anymore. Mm -hmm. From this day on, we are calling it the pharmacy with an There F. you go. Pharmacy with an F. And there if you we go. do that, now we're mindful as we're shopping mm, yes. mm -hmm. to, to look at things as pharmacy. And you can highlight the things and make a supermarket list from the book of what nuts, what meats, what vegetables. I mean, go in and take the, the, the weird stuff, like you said, like the starfish fruit or the coconuts. Coconuts are so good, you were saying in there. And we just kind of overlook all of these things. So mm -hmm. let's get some variety. Let's get some um, some some healthier choices going. I am um, really really excited for um, the breakthroughs that we're all having with this book. And so thank you for that. Thank you for being with us today. Um, of course. And I'm going to make sure I mention, of course, that the book is called The Pegan Diet. It's available wherever books are sold, correct? It's out today, yes. right, Dr. Anyway. Ryman? The 23rd, That's right? right. Woo. That's right. Today, and so, um, yeah, I don't have anything on here. Otherwise, Kelsey, was there anything else? Yes, you do. Let's scroll down, or can you see the little promo? I think it's, I don't want to mess up your website, Dr. Hyman. It's, is it just Dr. I don't have anything. It's drhyman.com, just drhyman.com. And the, the website for the book is peakanddiet.com. Amazing. So if they go to Peak and Diet, they can get over $500 of free food Ooh. <laughs> when they buy the book. Because oh. I've got all these partners like Thrive wow. Market and Paleo Valley and others that have offered to give free food to people who buy the book and go to peakanddiet.com. Holy so cow. Holy moly. Basically, basically, the book is free and then some. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, no, I just found the, the paper. Sorry, I have a lot of different no, things you're good. here. So yeah, the book is out now. You can go to at Dr. Mark Hyman on Instagram and Twitter. The podcast is called The Doctor's Pharmacy with an F with Mark Hyman on Apple Podcasts. And like you said, you can go to drhyman.com for more. Um, I hope this is the first of many conversations. Yes, this was fun. I love it. Well, thank you. Enjoy Maui. Um, we'll you. be there soon to do our next episode with you. Please yeah. come, <laughs> right? absolutely come pretty awesome right he's amazing yeah i kept i'm like kevin no more soda i literally i am like so excited to hear to him talk about the cancer stuff too because yeah. obviously you know that i'm engulfed in all of that right now and oh, yeah. everyone i'm dealing with is because people are coming to me for help so a lot of the newer patients that i'm coaching it just gives me so much more um to go off of to be able to say like please change over to the keto diet instantly um so very exciting and i know kev think about this you said something to me the other day about how i'm waking up happy and mm -hmm. that wasn't always the case right. um we'll be nice about it and so um i wonder obviously i'd have to think and credit the fact that i'm not eating yeah, sugar it didn't help you know, to that it didn't help i mean listen i think we're all most people are dealing with difficult jobs probably toxic bosses and in co-workers and environments not to and then like families and nobody has it perfect but you try to control what you can control and you can control this and it's just hard for because you get tired right and you just mm -hmm. you, your body wants your body comfort. craves shit it, yeah to give you that little high Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we talked to, we've talked about, you know, our slow coffees, their caf it's caffeine is cocaine for the brain. Mm. It feels good. He said coffee was okay though. In pure form. But again, if you can find, you have to find, you know, your good coffee or you have to do coffee right. And, and listen, I, I think that it's hard for anyone to do this crazy religiously, but I think that, um, you, there's an 80, 20 here. Yeah. Right. 80%. I'm getting closer. You are, but you know, Gamaria, you have the means and the time. And, you know, for other people, it's it's hard. But I think if you can shoot for maybe 50, 50, 60, 40, mm -hmm. you know, 70, 30, 80, 20, you know, I always think 80, 20 is the number. Of hey, like, the means didn't you know. help me cut sugar. I just cut sugar. I just said no moss. My A1C levels were high and I want to shrink my brain tumor. So you don't have to have money to cut sugar. You don't, Maria, but I think that 
it, it's it's hard when you don't have a lot of support around you and you it takes a lot of strength and endurance and you know and, and the means in terms of you're exposed to all these people but i guess your fans are exposed too so you know you know. Yeah, Kelsey doesn't have the means necessarily, but she eats a very clean, healthy diet. She does because she's a queen. I'm a queen, but right? I will, but I will say, but I agree. I mean, and that's why I love places like a Thrive Market because I'm don't have a ton of money, but I have enough to shop on like a Thrive Market yeah. who makes it accessible and gives us like there's great deals on there and it's cheaper than yeah shopping all you like, gotta you have to find your way it's just right. hard when you know if you're working a 12 or 13 hour day and it, it's not convenient and right you have to push your body beyond its limits for your children it's it's hard but you know, that's what I, no, I know no i know a full diet change is hard i'm just saying there are certain things that i think you can do in baby steps right like yeah I, that's, what I'm, soda, that's what I'm saying honey. and then I, I cut out chicken then I cut out sugar like now I'm I'm getting closer and closer you can't just I, I don't think it's not for me and I'm a very disciplined person mm -hmm. I can't just do radical change I just do it in increments and then when that's easy I move to the next right. thing right so yeah, I, I think, think that's and I think that makes it more um, I think that makes it more aspirational and I feel like the whole anxiety like the way i feel like the last century was just diet look your best mm -hmm. that was the kind of entry point in now you know at the levels of depression anxiety and suicide you know are so high and i and i mm -hmm. think that um this is all this stuff is so grossly affecting it yeah you know um, and all of us so that was amazing. Let's uh, transition a little bit. So we've been kind of changing the way we do the show, guys. Um, let us know what you think. If you like us going right into the interview and having our chit chat later, I'm curious. Um, but my very dear friend, Wilmer Valderrama, um, just announced the birth of oh. his new baby girl. Hi, oh, girl. And mm -hmm. I have it here, but... Oh, cute. That's what I was going to pull he's up, He's going to be such a great dad. I'm so happy really, for them. I'm really happy for um, them. Amanda is his fiance, and I, like, they, that happens so fast. You know, COVID is crazy. You don't get to see your friends. We've been, obviously, in our kind of rabbit hole of, you know, COVID, actually dealing with COVID and cancer and all that, but, um, you know, your friends just their lives go on and you're like oh shit you just had a baby now <laughs> like i gotta mm -hmm. i gotta catch up so well, it's kind of um, crazy super happy for them it's yeah. like I, I was just gonna say it's kind of crazy like how has it been a how has it been a year oh but i mean I know. people have had like gotten pregnant had babies it's been kevin has his baby over there <laughs> it goes faster than you think yeah. i know we um we are uh a few weeks behind on our next round with the surrogate we had a, a little glitch in communication so she was just like waiting to hear from the clinic and then there was a miscommunication so she just started her next round of medications so we're testing the medications to make sure that when we implant mm -hmm. it works mm -hmm. and luckily we did that because the first round it wouldn't have worked so um oh, wow. i know you're clutching winchenza there honey but i know you're like desperately waiting i, I want to russell wilson this so bad you know yeah, our kevin just wants to find someone and just do it like, and be like done can we explain what the russell wilson term is yeah it's yes. like he's a quarterback that doesn't always have the best offensive weapons and so like at some point in the third quarter he just goes f this he starts running myself and yeah. he runs the ball downfield and just you know and like and that's what i'm just saying like i i you know it's like the middleman involved and this one and that one and just and uh, well also i haven't had time to micromanage any of yeah. it and so anyway I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Um, thank you to our Heel Squad for always being with us. Thank you guys, by the way, for answering the call to follow on Instagram and YouTube. Subscribe because we've been seeing the numbers go up, up, up. We love you. We thank you for it. If you still haven't, please do. Helps us so much. Um, <laughs> and then share this with friends. Um, you know, I think that um, it's so important to share things that are helping you right? Like my whole goal every day is to share with you guys everything I'm learning and everything I'm 
um, being exposed to. So you just do the same thing and you're gonna be able to touch lives as well. Just like we're touching lives, we're all touching lives together because we're better together. Um, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, like I said earlier on in the show, you can click the link tree on Better Together with Maria or on Maria Menounos on my Instagram and you can join us at any level, but at the $10 a month level, you're investing in yourself and these healing workshops are just incredible um, and really game changing. So um, join us there. If you haven't listened to episode 169 with Dr. Frank Lipman, highly suggested another functional medicine doctor with a ton of health hacks that um, will really help you specifically with the gut. We touched on the gut a little bit today, but he gave us five easy life changes for optimal gut health that I think you'll love. Tomorrow we have novelist Annie Lamont on, plus a special guest co-host. So uh, make sure you guys tune in. In the meantime, if you haven't gotten your life manual or your medical manual, um, go to mariamenunos.com, sign up, get them, fill them out, and change your life instantly. Follow us at Better Together with Maria, at Dr. Mark Hyman, at Kels Meyer 2, at Stephen Lemieux Photo. Honey, give my Winchenza a big kiss. And remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. <laughs>